What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we are gonna be talking about micro nine millimeter pistols, which I have a lot of experience with. I've pretty much shot every micro nine millimeter pistol on the market, so today we're gonna be talking about the five best micro nine millimeters for the money. Price to performance ratio is going to be absolutely huge here. Most, if not all these guns are gonna be extremely affordable, but they're not going to be slacking on very critical things like reliability, accuracy, feature set, ergonomics, etc. Some of them are obviously going to be better than others, but all of them are going to be good, small, and in nine millimeter. Now, some of you kind of poo-poo micro nines, but the gun you have on you is a lot better than the gun you left at home. It's sort of like a condom. Nobody wants to use them, but it's better if you do. Now, before we do that, I do want to mention my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. You guys provided the ammo for all the testing, and we really appreciate you guys. If you want to join the patron squad, all you have to do is go to the link in the description below. And I also want to mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It's a youth shelter. Those kids could really use your help. The donate page is in my description, so please go down to the description of this video and every video and donate a couple bucks to those kids. At number five is the only gun I don't have here on the table because I did trade it. It is number five in all fairness and that is the Taurus GX4. Now the Taurus GX4 is a good gun for an extremely affordable price. The Taurus GX4 is a three inch nine millimeter striker fired polymer frame pistol designed for concealed carry. It is very small and very lightweight at only 18 ounces unloaded. It comes with two 11 round magazines, two back straps, steel white dot sights, pretty good texture, and optics models are available. It also has front slide serrations, which I really like to be able to run the slide effectively, and it has a solid trigger that I was honestly impressed with when I tried it out. The reason why it's at number five is because it has a spotty track record of reliability amongst its models. It has pretty limited quality control compared to the rest of the companies that are gonna be on the list, and just because I got a good one doesn't necessarily mean you will. That being said, they come in at an MSRP of around 350, and they can be found for under $300 if you look, making them extremely extremely affordable. In my personal testing, we had one malfunction, which is not perfect reliability, but acceptable, especially for the price point. I also like the fact that it has a big trigger guard, so in cold places, like let's say Iowa in the winter, you can use it with gloves and not have to worry about it. That is a prerequisite for me for a carry gun, so I always look out for that, although you people in California and Florida probably doesn't make much of a difference. Now the gun was extremely accurate as well. In our testing, I was able to hit pretty decent at 75 yards and really good at 50 yards, which is saying a lot for a three inch micro nine. With a lot of practice, you can be very effective with this gun. It had good recoil control as well, so I was able to shoot it fast up close, which I would say is the most important. Able to hit your target and able to hit it quickly for $350 is a real good start to the video. Before we share more of the best micro nines for the money, we would like to thank our channel sponsor, Brownells. Brownells has your range day completely covered. Load up with the best range bags. Outfit yourself with the best dots, optics, and lights that we use right here on the channel. Dial in your accuracy with their targets and cleaning tools to help you maintain your gear. When you check out Brownells, make sure you use code OUTLAW10 at checkout. Thank you to Brownells for bringing amazing free content to all of our viewers. In at number four is the Canik MC9. Now the Canik MC9 is a very interesting gun. It is a 3.2 inch barreled nine millimeter striker fired pistol at 21 ounces of weight unloaded. So it is slightly bigger than the Taurus, but it shoots a lot better in my personal opinion as well. Now, even though it's one of the most shootable micro nines, shooting a micro nine is sort of like holding on to a bucking Bronco on meth. They have a lot of recoil by comparison to any other handgun, and you just have to be aware of that. Now, the Canic series has been known for a long time, just like Taurus, to be very good for the money. The gun comes with three back straps, a higher capacity than the Taurus at 12 and 15 round magazines. A little bit bigger gun, a little bit more capacity. Also comes in multiple colors and the MSRP is around $400. Although it can be found for significantly cheaper than that, also around the $300 price point if you look and you live in the Midwest. 
<laughs> you people on the coast are not getting prices that cheap. Now, the gun has a good set of sights, as you can see here. It has a steel rear with a front dot, which are both steel, just like the Taurus. This one has an optics mount included, which I believe, it's been a while since I reviewed this, but it was the Shield RMS pattern, I believe. The micro dots and the Vortex and the SIG, I imagine will fit on there as well. Front slide serrations, and this one actually has a light rail with three Picatinny slots, which is really cool. Now, the grip is pretty good and the texture is good, but what I would say is the best part about the Canik MC9 is certainly the trigger. That same great trigger you guys get used to on the large Canics, you actually have on the MC9 as well. A little bit heavier than something like the TTI Combat and maybe four and a half pounds, but certainly an excellent striker fired trigger for the size. You can see the break here, feels very, very good. And then the reset is also extremely good. We actually do have a first shots and a full review on this gun, I do believe. As far as the reliability on this gun, on my model at least, was really good. Now, I have heard that there were models that didn't come out of the gate swinging, if you know what I mean. So the quality control on Canik might not be the world's best either. So another gun just like the Taurus where I had a really good experience, but you know, users may vary, so be aware of that. Now, if you're looking for an absolutely bomb-proof, reliable gun, the next three have you covered. But before we get there, we'll continue with the MC9. Now, the MC9 is probably the biggest gun on the list as far as thickness and size, making it probably one of the more shootable guns as far as recoil control. But again, that varies based on the individual. I like shooting the gun. I thought it shot really well. However, my wife thought it was really, really snappy. So I think that depends on hand size. Compared to the Taurus or something like the Sig P365, the Canik does have a little bit thicker grip than those Micro 9s. So that might be the difference as well. Now, as far as accuracy goes, I would consider the Canik one of the most accurate micro nine millimeters you can get because the interface with the gun is so good. As I mentioned before, the grip is really, really comfortable. And on top of that, the trigger is absolutely excellent. So when you pull the trigger, the sights don't leave the target and you hear that sweet, sweet ping. In at number three, one of my personal carry guns, it is the Glock 43. X. Now the Glock 43X sort of qualifies as a micro nine millimeter and sort of doesn't because it is technically a single stack. It is a single stack polymer frame pistol with a striker fire design. Think a very small and skinny Glock 19 or a slightly longer Glock 26. It has a three inch barrel and a weight of only 17 ounces, making it very lightweight for the size, which is what I really like about it. The gun has the biggest grip of any of the pistols on this list, and that is one of the reasons why I actually carry it, because getting the smallest gun isn't always the best idea. I like the longer grip on the 43X because I can draw it perfectly every single time. A lot of situations occur that make your draw much more difficult, getting assaulted by somebody jumping on my back or whatever whether I have to draw with one hand or whether I've already been shot, and I want this bigger grip to be able to draw effectively. What that also does is allow me extreme recoil control, which I like a lot. Now, the reason why I said whether it's a Micro 9 or not is debatable is because even though the Glock magazines, the standard magazines, have only 10 rounds and they are single stack, the Shield Arms magazines have 15 rounds and are stack and a half, which technically make it qualify as a Micro 9, and I use it as a Micro 9, so here we are. Now the barrel itself is 3.41 inches and the MSRP on the gun is $450, although they can be found for around 400, making them extremely affordable. They're also easy to customize. As you can see here, I have a lot of different things done to mine because I do shoot this and carry this very regularly. I have Ameriglow sights on it and I have some Talon grips along with a uh, different magazine release because if you switch over to the Shield Arms magazines, which are metal, you have to switch over to a metal magazine release as well. Now, as far as the performance of the Glock 43X, I, in my opinion, it is second to none. It is extremely shootable, it is very accurate, and it is unbelievably reliable. Thousands of rounds through this gun with very, very few issues. Almost all of those were ammunition or me related, and I would trust the Glock with my life because I do. Now, the trigger in the gun is probably worse than the previous two. However, I've shot Glock so long, I'm so used to the trigger, it doesn't really matter to me. As far as Glocks go, I feel like the grip on the 43X or the 48, or prop, which is just the four inch version of this, are probably the most comfortable. They have the least amount of hump, and 
Yeah, there's jokes in there. I just can't think of one. Another amazing thing about the 43X is that not only are they awesome, but they are extremely available. This is one of the highest sold pistols in the United States, and it is available at pretty much every gun store. The better part about that is that the magazine and the holsters, which make the carry system, are available in just about every gun store as well. Now, I wanted to do a quick honorable mention because it's basically like the bargain bin version of the Glock 43X. This is the PSA Micro Dagger, which is around hundred dollars cheaper it has very similar features some better and some worse and I really want to like this gun but when we took it out to the first shots I actually had a good bit of malfunctions interestingly enough all of a sudden a barrel showed up in the mail I put the barrel in and it started shooting much better so apparently I had one of the first models and it had some sort of barrel issue although I wouldn't put a gun that I haven't absolutely proven on a list like this that being said they might have improved these to where they're reliable now and they might be certainly worth the squeeze but since I haven't reviewed it, it didn't make the list. All right, in at number two, straight out of my wife's carry rotation, the SIG P365. Now the SIG P365 is the OG micro nine millimeter. They are the ones who started, or at least made popular, the stack and a half magazine design, allowing a pistol this small, which was previously only reserved for like subcompact 380 ACP pistols that are single stack, to be allowed in nine millimeter and then also have a 10 round magazine capacity. Shootable, it's tiny and it's reliable, so I always put it on list because you can't deny the effectiveness. I mean, you still hit all the targets. Yeah. It's an 18 ounce gun that you can hide in your pocket yeah. you know that's underwear. why people love it it's because it's the smallest gun you can still kind of shoot underwear gun, underwear gun. <laughs> this gun is like half the size of the glock 26 which was the previous go-to small nine millimeter carry gun of its era it really changed the game and it basically produced all of these copies which you've seen on the table here some better than it and some not the P365 is certainly still one of the smallest 9mm pistols on the market. At only 17 ounces, a 3.1 inch barrel, it is still capable of that 10 plus 1, or 12 plus 1, or 15 plus 1, depending on what magazines you decide to choose. The most affordable model, or the basic model here, still comes with front slide serrations. It still comes with the SIG X-ray sights, which is that HD tritium front with a blacked out rear, which is an absolutely excellent set of sights. It has a really good trigger as well, along with with a pretty comfortable grip if you have small size hands. My wife absolutely loves the grip and I'm kind of 50-50 because I'm really tall. Some of them come with optics ready models, some of them don't. You can go anywhere from the MSRP of 600 on the SIG all the way up to about the $1,400 price point depending on what bells, whistles, and features you want on your 365. However, they can be found for really, really affordable prices as well because this is the highest selling pistol in the United States. They are available literally at every gun store and holsters are available as well and so are magazines. I've seen these guns go for as low as $400 and they are absolutely a steal at that price point. Point, considering the feature set, considering the reliability, which we've had many, many P365 first shots and reviews on this channel, and they are all very reliable. They're also very accurate for the size, and you can shoot them pretty quick as well, making them one of the best carry guns you can buy on the market today, along with the 43X and soon to be the number one on this video. You can get them with or without a safety, pretty much every feature that you could imagine. And on top of that, if you get your P365 and you wanna change something about it, they actually have the P320 style fire control unit in here. So you can go to SIG's website and you can pick up any grip, any slide, any part that you want, and you can put it on here a la carte, which is absolutely amazing. Overall, the P365 is one of the best carry guns you can buy. And for its price, it is certainly one of the best micro nines for the money. Now, as I mentioned before, an honorable mention on this video is going to be the PSA Dagger. I also want to mention the FN Reflex, which was a good gun, just not better than the ones that I had on this list, and it's more expensive than a lot of them, so I left it off. That being said, if that's your carry gun, don't get all sour pants on me. It's pretty decent. Now, in at number one, this is a big shocker, but it's my personal carry gun, the Shield Plus.
Now, the original Smith & Wesson shield was what I would consider the absolute gold standard for single stack nine millimeter concealed carry pistols. It was the original awesome micro nine millimeter, and when they made it in a stack and a half design, I jumped on it like fat kids jump on cupcakes. I absolutely love this gun, and I've shot the shield more than I've shot any other micro nine by a wide margin. I have five of them now, which go in and out of my carry rotation, but the standard no frills, no features gun, which is the most affordable, is still an amazing gun. The standard Shield Plus has an MSRP of $499, but again, you can find them for around 400 bucks. It is gonna be a little bit bigger than the P365 at around 18 ounces with a 3.1 inch barrel. It has a thicker grip as well, and it comes with a 10 and 13 round magazine and an Armonite finish, which I really appreciate because a lot of guns tend to rust when you carry them because your belly sweat gets on them all day, and better finish also helps with lubricity and keeping the gun reliable longer without lubrication in case you don't lube your gun all the time like me. Now, the gun itself is what I would consider the most shootable Micro 9. I feel like it made you shoot better. Oh my God. I feel like I'm turning into a Shield Plus girl, honestly. Everyone who shoots it does. <laughs> It has that 3.1 inch barrel, like I said. It comes with really decent sights. However, I've switched mine out here. This one is actually the Ameriglow HD front with the blacked out rear. And it has the fish scale slide serrations, the new 2.0 flat face trigger, which make this gun very accurate and very, very shootable at distance and up close. We have good texture on the grip and a thicker grip than the 365. So if you're a bigger guy, I generally tell people to go with the shield. Now, if you're a smaller fella, I typically recommend the P365 because of the grip size. I can't stress to you enough how reliable the Shield series has been in my personal testing. The original Shield, I had multiple versions of that, and they were absolutely reliable. The Shield Plus was reliable. I have the Shield Performance Center. I have the new Shield Plus Carry Comp, which just came out a few weeks ago. We already have 500 routes for it, and it's reliable. I would consider reliability to be the most important factor when it comes to concealed carry, because if the gun doesn't work, it doesn't matter matter how well it shoots. That being said, I like to hit shit too, and the Shield Plus is also the most shootable Micro 9 for me. Coming in at around that $450 price, which I normally see them for, I think it's an absolutely exceptional buy, and I absolutely think you can't go wrong with the gun. Now, just like the 365 and just like the Glock, they are available at every gun store, being in the top five of the highest sold guns in the country, and holsters again, and magazines again are very available. Now, if you don't want to be stuck with the 10 and 13 round mags. They have 15s and even bigger magazines available if you want to carry a little extra capacity. Again, just like the Glock and just like the SIG. Now, it doesn't have a fire control unit like the SIG, but I think the gun comes pretty much perfect as it is, so there's nothing really I would want to change besides the sights anyway. If you want to upgrade $100, you can get the ported models, which are the Performance Center, and I would absolutely recommend those because it takes even more pop off that small 9mm, and the less recoil the gun has, the more accurate people generally are because they they less anticipation of recoil if you have less recoil. And on top of that, you can train longer throughout the day with less recoil as well. So I do recommend the ported model. So I know a lot of times people get it twisted on the ports because they're like, oh my God, they're gonna burn you or they're gonna make the gun louder. Well, maybe they will a little bit, but if they save your life, who gives a shit? I really like the ported Micro 9s because I actually shoot them a lot and I think micro pistols need to be shot the most. I know most people who shoot guns all the time, they shoot big fun guns and they carry little guns that they never shoot. And I gotta tell you, micro nine millimeter pistols are some of the hardest guns in the gun industry to shoot. If you can shoot a little handgun, you can shoot pretty much anything. So I would recommend if you carry a micro nine, practice makes perfect. And if it's easier to shoot and it's more fun to shoot, I shoot it more. And that's probably the main reason why I carry the shield. Now, there's lots of micro nine millimeters on the market. These are just my personal favorite for the money. If you agree with my list, let me know in the comment section below. If you disagree with my list, make sure to put your list in the comment section below. And if I forgot any micros that I need to test on the channel that I haven't seen yet, I'd love for you to tell me in the comments as well. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. It is a, th that's how annoying it is to live next to me. <laughs>
<laughs> Except that's happening all the time. I have to wait for this guy shooting and that must be everyone else's life in like a five square mile radius of my house. <laughs> You're like, why the fuck is this guy always shooting? We don't know our neighbors yet. So. <laughs> we just moved. <laughs>